Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're so pleased you're here. Welcome to our loyal fans that uh, frequent many of our webinars. And um, we're always pleased when we have some new faces, even though I can't see your faces. I know you're out there. And um, we welcome you and hope you become fast friends with us at Becker's. So I am Leslie Esslinger, and I'm here with uh, Rob and Terry and Marilyn and Kathy, our team of folks who keep everything running smoothly. We are uh, so pleased to have Todd here today. And I, and I think that Todd um, believes that he is a lucky one because he is having this opportunity to be in front of people that really bring his work um, and his messages to the children. And that's where these messages need to go. So um, I know that he feels thrilled to be here. And um, for once, he's not in front of a, an audience of young people. He's in front of an audience of uh, VIPs, um, our wonderful early educators. So we always do our housekeeping. So uh, we'd like you to know that there will be a certificate that everybody will receive by email within 24, 48 hours. And yes, there will be a recording available for anyone that maybe cannot stay for the full session. Or if you want to share it with other folks, please do. Uh, letting you know that we often have additional resources available to you. Uh, free downloads on our website, and we will give you a link to that a little later. And uh, just as an example, there's really fun uh, uh, fill-in sheets, activity sheets, and all kinds of fun references that Todd has made available to our um, folks today. So please be sure to check that out at the end. And um, another fun thing is we will be giving out two sets of Todd Parr books book sets at the end of this webinar. So we hope you can hang in there. And now uh, it's my absolute pleasure that I get to introduce Todd. And um, I'm sure to many of you, he does not need an introduction. He's accomplished all the things that you see bulleted on this slide and then some, but it's a more personal view that I'd like to share now. We've had some time to work together in the last few months, and I've come to learn that Todd is as cool, kind, and friendly as his book characters. Todd's books are an extension of his values as a human. He cares deeply about doing work that will make a difference in this world. Aside from serving up important messages about kindness, inclusivity, and individuality in every book, he works to support causes that are dear to his heart, like pet adoption, children's hunger, health, and literacy. We promise today that Todd would entertain, enchant, and enthrall you with his books that have a powerful impact on your students and all the grown-ups who touch their lives. So no pressure, Todd, but um, we are now turning it over to you. Well, thank you very, very much. That was one of the nicest welcomes I could ever get, um, introductions. Um, you already know who I am. I'm Todd Parr. It's a very simple name. It's just Todd Parr. But it's so simple that that kids like to just say one word. So it's always Todd Parr. Hey, Todd Parr, Todd Parr, look at this. Todd Parr over here. And then there was a school that changed it at one of my visits to Todd Party. So you can call me Todd Parr or Todd Party, whichever. Um, I'll show you a picture of that in just a minute. I'm an author and an illustrator of over 60 books for kids. And thank you so much for being here. Um, thank you, Beckers, for inviting me to do this. Um, I absolutely love what I do. And people say, it must be so cool being the children's author. And I said, what makes it cool is I don't just get to do what I love, but I get to do things that help make a difference for other people. So with that, um, today, I just want to have some fun and inspire you. And thank you for all that you do. Um, I'm going to start off reading one of my books that is dedicated to teachers and educators, librarians. Um, and then I'll share my screen. I'll show you some other fun stuff, uh, pictures of my dogs, things that you may not know about me, um, like how I had to repeat second grade. Um, also, 
um, some pictures of my dogs, which yeah, everybody wants to see my dogs. But first, I'm going to start off with um, I love my teacher. And I wrote this book purely out of love and as a thank you. And in the dedication, in the beginning, it says this book is dedicated or this book was inspired by my love of teachers, both those who encouraged me when I struggled in school and those who support my books today. Here's to all the great teachers in the world. Love, Todd. So that is the dedication. I love teachers because they love coming to school and they make you love it, too. Teachers help you learn new things. Teachers encourage you to be creative. They help you find new talents. Teachers read to you. They play games with you too. Teachers are always willing to help students in need. Sometimes teachers make you laugh. Don't know if any of you do this, maybe after school. Sometimes they make you feel better. Teachers let you share all your favorite things. Teachers make the classroom a great place to be. They make sure students have everything they need. Teachers help you make new friends. Teachers have lots of celebrations. Teachers make you yummy snacks. They take you on field trips. Teachers love when your families come to visit. Teachers can be just like you and me. They eat macaroni and cheese in the bathtub. They brush their teeth with strawberry flavored toothpaste. They go shopping for new underwear and they let their pets sleep in their bed. Teachers encourage you to try your best. Most of all, they love to see you succeed. Teachers are very special. They help you learn new things. They take care of you. Don't forget to thank them every day. The end, love, pod, party. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm gonna share my screen now and I'm gonna show you all kinds of fun things. I'll show you a picture of this bulletin board when my name was changed. So I walk into this school. It was in Chicago, I think. And there it is, welcome Todd Party. So again, I Todd Party sounds like a much funner name, so you can call me whichever. So far, I've written 65 books in 22 languages. These are some of them that you may have read. Oops, I didn't mean to go so fast for you on that one. And these are some of the older ones. I've been busy over the last 23, two years. These are what some of them look like in different languages. And now a lot of my books are coming in dual language, which is very exciting because they're very popular and long overdue. I write about a lot of things, but mainly kindness is one of the things that's so important to me for kids because it's so simple. It's so easy, but yet we all need reminders. So this is one of my favorite books. And I try and write about things that inspire kids to be kind, to feel good about who they are, to help others be confident, all the things that I wasn't when I was in school. I want you to have fun today. No yelling. So everybody can hear. And I want you to ask questions. We'll do that at the very end. This is my resume. Hi, I'm Todd. I live in Berkeley, California. It's close to San Francisco. I grew up in Wyoming. I like to cook, paint, and draw, but I failed art class. Now I create books for kids. My books are about love, kindness, families, feeling good, and sometimes they are silly. I love animals. The fog, sea lions, dolphins, skunk, sports, my dogs, Pete, Tater Todd, and Jerry, 
the end love taught. Do you think I would get a job as a teacher with this resume? Librarian, surely a librarian. No, principal. No, I'll just stick to what I do. This is the beginning. Um, and you are getting a version of the presentation I do to schools. Um, some of this may not be true. I am from planet Todd world. I arrived here on a spaceship. I lived in a gingerbread house. We had to move when I was in the second grade because I ate the roof off of it one night. I lived in the bathtub where I ate macaroni and cheese. You may recognize this from it's okay to be different. I get asked questions all the time since I talk about macaroni and cheese. Todd, what is your favorite food? Well, macaroni and cheese with worms, tacos, grilled cheese, and my favorite book, Go Dog Go. This is my favorite book over and over and over again. My grandma read me this book, um, and I think she was the only one that really realized that I was a visual learner. Um, and it's how I engage with kids today. I think it's so important to bring them into the process when I'm reading a book, not just quiet, be, listen. Um, I want to make them part of it. And my grandma would ask me, what do you like about this page? Why is the blue dog your favorite? What are they going to do next? Every time through that book. And I think that's so important when reading to kids is make them part of the process. Um, I had that book memorized and I made it to second grade before they realized that I couldn't read. So finally, I had to repeat second grade. And no one really realized that I was a visual learner. Later in life, of course, I was diagnosed with dyslexia and then ADD and ADHD and all these things that didn't really exist. They, when I was younger, they just treated me as a slow learner. But the good news is I did graduate second grade. I move on and now look at me, I've, I'm writing kids books and I couldn't read. Um, changed a little bit since second grade. And that my experience in second grade is really what inspired It's Okay to Be Different because I wanted to write about things that helped other kids that struggled like I did and let them know that some of us are good at some things and not so good at others, but we can try our best and that's how we learn. I did learn to draw Snoopy also in second grade by tracing the black outline. Um, I got so good, I entered a contest and I won. And that's what said to me, I want to be an artist. I love to draw. It makes me feel good. So I pursued art all through school. This is some of my earlier work. The Fruit Bowl, that was high school. The Dragons, that was fourth grade. And the Owl, that was pen and ink in middle school. And I still got an F in high school art class. Again, there were some changes there too. I don't know what happened. Um, I had an art teacher that um, it was his way or it was no way. And he didn't recognize any differences or anything in me. Um, he just, I was a difficult student. I had a very difficult upbringing and I don't, he did not know what had happened in my home life and I would come to school and I'd be very determined to draw but I only wanted to draw what I wanted to do and because of this constant back and forth I got an F in art class and he said you'll never be an artist and people often ask um what does your art teacher think today and I'm like I don't think he was really alive even before my first books came out um but if I did have an opportunity to talk to him, I would say, well, thank you for being a teacher. Thank you for putting up with me. Um, I had a very difficult time, which you didn't know about. Um, but if you could have found something positive to tell me, like, Todd, why do you like such bright colors? Or Todd, you draw really good circles. Anything positive, because for somebody like me in second grade and younger, just struggling with who I was and my confidence level, a teacher, if they tell you you're good, it goes a long way. If they tell you you're no good, it goes a long way. Actually, it went through a big part of my life until one day I finally realized that I just want to be an artist and I have more confidence. That happened by becoming a flight attendant for United and traveling around the world. That certainly boosted my confidence. It also tells you how old I am. 
Um, I kept coming back to the art thing saying, I love to paint and draw. That's all I want to do. And I'm not going to stop. And it doesn't matter what anybody says this time, I'm going to do what I want to do. So I started painting everything, canvases, furniture. And then I was like, well, I need to get it on more things like clothing. And finally, I got into Macy's and they said, well, you could do San Francisco themed things and we'll do a little mini department. Um, so I got to do that. And that led to FAO Schwartz in New York. So when that was still on 55th and 5th, um, right when my first four books launched, we did an event there um, where they had some merchandise, the books launched. And it was just so cool to walk up on 5th and see your artwork um, in the windows of FAO Schwartz. Um, and Macy's also did that. Why is this? Sorry. They're just repeating. So anyway, it was this was the inside of inside of New York, the department. And this is San Francisco. So when you're walking down the street and you think like, remember that time your art teacher said you would never be an artist and you got an F and you think like, well, look at me now. I mean, that's got to make you feel really good. Of course, gives you more confidence. Ended up in Toys R Us. So it was Macy's first, FAO Schwartz, and then Toys R Us Japan. And had merchandise and books in all 123 Toys R Us stores. So if you needed uh, contact lens cases, pencils, markers, stickers, diapers, dishes, with my art on it, you could get it there. So that was really an exciting thing to do. I went there. I signed books. It, like, 35 locations, um, just an amazing time in my life. Um, I explained to you about my love for teachers. It was the fact that along the way, so many of them recognized the challenges that I had. Some of them didn't bother to learn more. They just said, he's slow, put him here. Others said, let me work with him more. So teachers have been what got me to this point in my life. This is my brain. I don't know if any of you can relate. There's a lot going on. I'm always thinking about food and new designs. These are my kids. You may or may not know. I have three kids, Pete, Tater, Tot, and Jerry. Do not let these faces fool you. They get into lots of trouble. And I have to say a disclaimer, I lost Tater Tot in December of this year, but I still keep her as part of the presentation because, you know, her name's Tater Tot and she's taking a nap in the sun. And who doesn't like a Tater Tot baking in the sun? I love Tater Tots. We're ready for dinner and treats, dad look. And Pete, very good reader, he works at a library. Tater, she would eat my books and my dog, Otto at the bottom was in a series of five books that I did. They're all adopted from an animal rescue. I took Pete and Tater Tot first. A few years later, they called me up and they said, Todd, would you come do a book signing for us for our special adoption day um, so we can get more people in and advertise it? And they said, sure. And then they brought over Jerry and they said, this is Jerry. He's one year old. He's been in the shelter his entire life. He has to find a home today. I said, you tricked me. I cannot have three pit bulls. They sleep in my bed. Where will I sleep? I ended up with three. This is Jer Jer at Halloween this last year. He's baby shark. Scary, huh? I do a lot of traveling um, when I, of course, could. It's just starting to come back now. Um, I ended up in all kinds of places across the country and throughout the world once I got my own parking spot. That's how important I was. Um, I love visiting it with schools and kids, you know, as I was talking about earlier about engaging them and bring them into the process. They already think they can draw like me because I always ask, how many of you think you can draw better than me? Um, and everybody's like, yeah, because they can. And I love that about what I do because someone once said you draw like a six-year-old and I thought well that's is that a compliment and then I realized it really is for what I do um, because kids aren't intimidated by my art so they'll just start drawing um, and of course 
they go crazy making all kinds of things for the school. Um, they know I love macaroni and cheese. So sometimes if in the lunchroom, I have that. And then they make cookies for me and my dogs. One school was so excited. They made beta, baked a cake. And then I went to China that same year at an American school there. And the librarian decided she should make cakes out of every single one of my book covers. Now, who doesn't like a giant pair of chocolate pink underwear cake for their birthday? Shanghai, Brazil, 28 of my books are in Portuguese. This was Dubai. And then of course, all over the country, um, I go back to Singapore every two years to the American school. I was 4,000 students in it. Um, obviously, because of things, I'm off track with that now. But they're very good readers. And then they leave me in the early learning center for three days. They just lock me up in there with all those kids. I know you can relate. I got a ton of letters and a ton of artwork. This is from Maggie. It says me and Todd Parr. I still haven't figured out which one is Maggie and which one is me. I do not look like Humpty Dumpty. And this one, I don't, I don't look like that. I, I just don't. I don't know what kids see. And this one, it, this looks like my hair, but I don't know if I'm laughing, yawning, yelling, or sneezing, or, or what I am. This is from Juan. Dear Todd Part, you are a good writer, but not my favorite. Dear Todd Parr, hi, my name is Antonio Martinez. I like reading math and science. I'm in the third grade at AMLA. I like sports like football, soccer, tag, and running. I like to eat pizza, shrimp, fish, broccoli, carrots, apples, watermelon, nuts, chicken, and turkey. I don't like your books because they're not at my reading level, which is I understand. This is from Lizette. Could you write back to me one day? Do you drink wine? Hmm. Well, of course, how do I do these books? So I have a pretty tough job, but don't feel sorry for me because as I said earlier, I get to write books that help make a difference for kids. I have another problem. Babies are eating my books. So we have to do board books now of every single one of my books that I do. This baby was reading my book and eating it. And then this next baby, she was she was reading the book and then she started laughing so much she she fell down and she couldn't get back up. So when you're reading my books, sit, make sure you're sitting down. This is some of the other fun stuff I get to do. If you don't already know, I had a TV series called Todd World that was on for several years. Um, I'm working on a new one, it's called Love and Tacos. And then also I got to do short films for Sesame Street. And that's one of them. And then I love to help others because doing what I do and the message that I have, I do as much as I can to help get back. Because so many people, like the teachers that got me through school, um, were there for me. I team up with food banks, um, like murals for hospitals, children's hospital. And I also have a giant ele uh, blue elephant at Target House at St. Jude. Um, that I did because that's their motto is elephants. Um, so I do a lot of that. And then I work together with a lot of other companies that help me do what I do and support some of the things that I'm passionate about, like helping families and reading and getting books into kids' hands and different projects and like Little Caesars this year, they worked with um, we are teachers and created, I created fractions uh, to learn uh, pizza fractions and that's downloadable on their website. Um, so it's just fun things like that to be able to do. Um, also sharing, we have a Be Who You Are Day that we started um, last year. It's just growing every year um, now. There's lots of fun things on my website you can sign for. It's actually tomorrow. So it's every September 30th. And it may be the third one. Now I'm on lost track. 
Um, these are some of the other companies that are places that I work with. I either donate books, donate time, donate money, donate my design, um, things to design t-shirts to sell, anything. And it's usually pets, animals, food. This is my studio. I'm in, um, I, I'm in a new place. I don't think you know this, but I moved from Berkeley this year to Palm Springs. Um, some place I've always wanted to live, and uh, so many of my friends are here, but this was my studio in Berkeley, so I haven't gotten a chance yet to have this type of thing built uh, where I'm at, but I had all my books, and then, of course, I love tacos so much, I decided to put in a Taco Todd's pop-up uh, in there to serve my friends. I didn't charge them, but it was really fun to do that, so you could come over, you could, like, see where I wrote my books, you could have tacos. Um, so I really miss this spot and I'm going to recreate something similar here. I always tell kids, surround yourself with things that make you feel good um, and it'll inspire you. And also have a bookshelf because a bookshelf is always good and makes you feel good. All that stuff, there's so much stuff at topar.com. Um, also on beckers.com, um, you can find uh, stuff there for me. They've got my book sets and everything else. So. Um, there's tips of ways to inspire writers. Um, there's reminders. Um, these are the pizza fractions that we're done with. We are uh, teachers. So you can download those um, from their site. I also have how to make a book. And this is step-by-step -step of I go through. It's a downloadable PDF. And I show the process of how I make my books. And I do everything on the computer. And this kind of really simplifies it for kids. So if they want to write their own book or their own Todd Parr book, that's also on my website. And then lastly, just new books and coming soon. There was a Learn to Read box set that came out in July. It's got 10 books in it. Um, all different books, so obviously this is special to me because I had trouble reading to be able now to have something to help kids. Um, there's a traveling, like, neon, like, sort of costume show with humans, but they're neon creatures that they, is a live show. It's traveling the country from east to west through Canada, and then they'll go to China and Singapore. So it's a pretty amazing thing. It's done by um, Little Mermaid Theater in Nova Scotia. So I'm really excited. I have not seen it yet, but that's coming soon. The Joyful Book just came out in board format, like in October. I just got one yesterday. And then my book for next spring, we tried something different. They asked me to write a book, a Halloween book, and I just couldn't get into it. So I come up with this idea to do a monster macaroni and cheese party where all these monsters get an invite to a party but they have to make their own macaroni and cheese and there's no humans allowed because humans make boring macaroni and cheese from a box so i'm so excited about this because it's just funny um different for me and then i even included two of my favorite recipes that i make when i make macaroni and cheese so that's spring of next year Told you about Be Who You Are Day. I'm on social. Um, everything there, I usually try and follow back or manage it. So I have help with that. Um, before we do questions, I'm going to come back, um, but I'm going to draw for you. And I want to leave you with it. It doesn't matter what color you are, where you are from, or who's in your family. Everyone needs to be loved. Always love yourself and be who you are. And if you know my books, you know that I end up all with a message. This is from Be Who You Are, but I think it applies every day. You could, you could read this. So I'm gonna get out of this screen. I'm gonna come back and just do a quick little presentation to show you how um, I draw because people wanna know like, well, if you draw on the computer, Todd, how, what do you do? So I use Photoshop and then I have presets for usually I work in square. And then I use this brush. I always point out, it gives you a demo of what it does, usually in 35 thickness. And then the reason that I love the computer so much, um, I'm gonna go higher for this, is that you can undo everything. So Todd, we're so, not, we're, we're not, are we supposed to be seeing anything visually right now? We're seeing you. Yes. Hold on. Let me re let me reshare. We're seeing you working Sorry. very hard 
<laughs> on this beautiful <laughs> which drawing. Must, which must look very strange. Um, <laughs> it says I'm sharing, so hold, hang on. Let me get out of this. Okay, I'm trying again. Ah, got it. Now you're seeing just a white sheet of blank paper, right? Yes. Okay, so I chose this tool here. This is the brush. Um, and then the thickness is at the top and then black. There we go. So see, I always show kids like that, you know, it's okay to make mistakes, which of course I wrote that book, but it's sometimes it's hard for me to get a complete circle that I like. And that one's like, it's really close. So then I use the eraser to kind of get it even better. And then I do all the black lines first, just like Snoopy. And then I'll adjust for the whiskers, and then I use the mouse. And then I have all my preset colors on the side, so I choose which one and then the paint bucket. And you know there's lots of paint programs and things out there, but this is Photoshop. And the cool thing, I think the coolest thing about this is I have my own font. Um, so once I have the background done, I can go over here and choose going to black and then choose the text button. Um, and it shows you what you do, each one of these. So I choose the text and then see up here is all the different fonts that you have to choose from, but I have the Todd Parr font. So I have that. And then I'm gonna say, so that's how we put the text in. So it's my own handwriting. When I'm all done, I just save this and I continually do this over and over and over um, for each page. And then when I get them all done, depending on what file it is and where it's gone, I save it. And then I start again, I do the same thing. And that, so it goes into a folder and that's how I'm able to work so quickly on my books is by doing it this way on the computer. So I will come back now and that's how I draw. And I would love to hear your questions, anything that you would um, like to ask me that I didn't cover. Well, people are, um, uh taking a few minutes to put their questions in place. I, I just want to share a few comments that I was peeking at during the, the session. And I think we have true confessions from somebody here who, oh, from Dave, true confessions. I have a set of Todd Park colors in my Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I've never heard that. So that's very cool. Ah, so he's, he's revealing all. And, um, oh, good. And somebody else made a comment, and I have to admit that I never noticed this, that um, that they like that you don't use noses. And I have to say, I never noticed that, but I, I realize now the humans might not have noses, but the animals do. Yes, but usually kids notice this all the time. They want to know, that's my number two or three question, Todd, why don't you put noses on people? And I always said, I, that's a good answer. I don't know. It's really, really simple. It's like, I just think when I draw noses, they don't look right. I tried doing a line and down, I tried doing an actual like two circles and two lines down and they just don't work on my people. So I said, I'm just going to put them on animals because all I can draw is a, a black dot. And I always tell kids, it's like, your art is your art. So if you don't want to put noses on your people, then you don't have to. And of course, unless your teacher asks you to try and draw a nose, it's always good to try. And sometimes you might be really good at noses and you didn't know that. So it's always good to listen to your teacher, try, and you never know. But I do not put noses on my people. And most of my people have two different colored shoes. 
I don't know why it's because I write about being different. So I figured, well, they've all got to have two different colored shoes then. Oh, that was going to be my question. I wanted to see your shoes today to see if they were the same color or different. <laughs> they are the same. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see. There's a couple. Um, let's see. Jacqueline Bader. Uh, we know her well. She wants to know if you're planning a trip to the East Coast anytime soon. And she I wants to bribe you with a giant size tray of mac and cheese. Well, that'll do it. That's all you have to do. Um, I do think there is some stuff coming up. I fortunately, I have an assistant um, beyond one of my dogs, um, a real human that helps me out. Um, and I think I saw some New York stuff. I'm not sure where, though, but um, I think there is stuff. Um, uh, how about our team? Is anybody seeing any other questions? I think um, so many people were busy writing rave reviews, um, loving this. Um, somebody said she had to admit she must have been living under a rock because she was not familiar with this stuff before today. So I guess you uh. have to thank us for, for bringing um, you to them. Uh, let's see. Any other questions here? A lot I'm, of I'm a very modest person I don't really think about does every surely everybody by now knows knows my my books but um but I, I'm always hearing from people that say I feel like I should have already known you um and my my books and that have been a very slow build over the years when I first started writing books um people weren't really sure what they were they were like well are, there's no characters you know, there's no bunnies in pastel colors. There's no stories. There's just these messages. Like, what? who are these for? What are these for? And um, most people looked at them as like, like when, if you remember Borders Bookstore, if you remember when they were around, It's Okay to Be Different was in the self-help section um, of it. And I'm like, because people would say, well, these are for social emotional issues. And I was like, but it should be on the picture book wall because it's like somebody could just feel like I'm me and I'm different and that's okay and I fit in. Um, so the world wasn't quite sure what I was doing and it took a very slow build. But as things changed in the world in these past 20 some years, you know, people like go, how do we talk to kids about all these things that are going on and about feelings and about taking care of the earth and peace and their complicated things are like the, the goodbye book, which I wrote. It's like, how do we talk to kids about the loss of a class pet or somebody in their family? And, you know, they're very difficult things to talk to somebody young about. And I just, from the heart, always write, just talk to them as easy as you can and use these bright colors and these fun things and balance it out. So the world's caught up with me. I'll, I'll just say that the world caught up with me finally. And then more and more people do find me still. That's great. Um, speaking of um, past times, somebody wanted to know what you did before Photoshop. I guess they are um, calculating that you were around before photo doing this work before Photoshop for your illustrations. That would be interesting to see when Photoshop was available. Um, and I feel like it it was when I started, but I used marker and paper. I just felt, well, that's, you write a book, you've got to do it on actual paper. And I did struggle with that um, in writing. And I, I, somehow I discovered drawing on the computer with a tablet because um, I have a, a Wacom tablet and then a pen and it's just seamless for me and when I first started doing this I think because especially there's so much beautiful art in children's books and so many talented illustrators that do these art for these beautiful books and then here I come in scribbling like a six-year-old and you know and then when people found out I did it on digitally and photoshop they were just like <gasps> these, this, oh, how could you do that, you know, and it's because of my style, it just seemed to really fit Photoshop, so um, I know I did my first eight small books by hand drawing, and I think when you go back and look at them, you can really tell, um, for me, they look very primitive to me, um, but yeah, so it was probably around 2000 when I maybe discovered, mm -hmm. really played and discovered with Photoshop, 
Um, somebody also wanted to know if you ever illustrate books for other authors. No, and that's that was a big ask. I've had that many years, and it, it's usually from things like um, they're writing uh, something for a medical journal about surgery or psychology, and I was like, I don't think you want my style of art to support your your knowledge. You know, <clears throat> excuse me. So I said no. It's I'm not an illustrator for anybody else but me. Fair enough. Um, let's see what we have here. Uh, la, 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 does this have a question in it? Uh, my second grader has a similar story. Uh, his teacher wanted to keep him back in first grade. He's below reading level, even with glasses. His, da, 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 da. What do you suggest I do for him as an encourager for the for the rest and remaining school years? So somebody that has um, a similar story that maybe wasn't understood, wasn't wasn't uh, performing well. First, tell him about me. Tell him, you know, Todd Parr's written all these books. Um, he does the words, he does the pictures, and he couldn't read in second grade. And he learned to read slowly by practicing um, with his teacher, by reading each word, and also focusing on the picture and talking about the page, about what they like, or maybe even getting to try, try and write their own book. And that is a confidence booster to say, there, you did it. Just like Tapar, you wrote your own book. Um, I think it's it's a few words it, uh, is, is the easiest way to go in pictures. Visually, I think it's so important to teach someone to read visually with art. You just, you need it. And I think, try that. If Tapar can do it, he can do it. That's great. Uh, so many other questions. I don't think we're going to have time for too many more, but I mean, I just want to spend a couple seconds just saying there are so many wonderful accolades in the chat box. Um, people enjoyed this thoroughly. Uh, don't go away yet. We um, have a few more things we want to share with you. So just hang in there. Um, Todd, if any other really critical questions pop up, we might come back to you. Okay. So I'm just going to share if you want to end your share, um, I'll bring up my screen again. No, I did in mine. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. And let's see what we're up to. Okay, what we are up to is we always do a, a quick evaluation um, to make sure that everybody gets out of our sessions what we hope they do. So um, I'm going to bring up this poll. There's three simple, simple questions. Uh, we'd appreciate it if you would just take those few minutes to answer them for us. Getting lots of responses. This is great. A couple more minutes. And I'm going to end the poll. Thank you for those who got their answers in for us. We really appreciate that. And um, we also just want to let you know that we have this great uh, resource page and you will see the link in the chat of how you can get to this. And again, thank you to Todd and his team for providing us with all these fantastic to free downloads that you can easily access and bring this fun stuff to your to your classroom. I mean, even if you don't have anything much on your agenda tomorrow, um, knowing that it's Be Who You Are Day, you might want to celebrate that. So we will have a copy of the recording. Uh, we also have links to these book sets that we've put together. So we took some of uh, our favorite books and put them into two book sets. Uh, one is Todd Parr's Be Who You Are book set, and those are all um, hardbacks. And the other one is a board book set. We don't want to forget about our toddlers. They love Todd Parr books as well. 
So there's lots of things for you to see at shopbecker.com. The link should be in the chat box and it's here on this screen. Here's another example of something fun that you can access free download. And now um, we're going to do this. Um, we rarely do these giveaways, but uh, Todd Parr's publishers were so generous and were able to give us two sets to give away at today's session. So we're going to do that and we're going to try something really uh, fancy here. If I can pull this off, we have a spinner wheel. And let's see, you'll let me know, somebody from my team, can you let me know if you're seeing this now? Got it. Okay, so we are gonna spin the wheel and the first person that comes up will win the um, the Todd Parr hardback book set for, um, it, it's great for your pre-K, K, first grade classrooms. So here we go. Here's our spin. Everybody's holding their breath. Ah! Okay, there's our first winner. Yay! Yay! And now we have another book set to give away. So we're going to spin again. Uh, I hope somebody from my team wrote down that person's name. Here we go again. Fingers crossed, holding my breath. Yay! Yay! All right, two great winners. We're so happy for you. Uh, we will be sending those books out to you. And the last thing, um, unless anybody from my team saw some any any other earth shattering questions that we want to get in in our last few minutes, anything else that I might have missed? There are a few questions in the Q&A area, Les. Okay, let me let me take a quick look at that. It's one from Michelle. Uh, Michelle, my friend wants to start writing children's books, but she is nervous about it. Any advice? That is the, that question becomes even harder these days. Before it was pretty straightforward. It would be like probably get a literary agent and show them, get them really interested in what you do, and then they can take it to a publisher. Sounds easy, but not. And then um, you know there were still publishers that take unsolicited uh, manuscripts, which I think chronicle books still does um i'm not sure though hmm. um and then came self-publishing and that world and i don't think there's any right answer i think they're all it's just a matter of be determined the biggest thing is is be confident in what you're sharing what your what your ideas and 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 think about the marketing and all this becomes so important these days that wasn't but think about how would it look on social media almost branding you know your idea like and how would it appeal to somebody else like why would somebody else like to read this book a lot of people have good ideas that come but they're very near and dear to them so somebody else wouldn't know that so um always think about the masses think about what your targeting is what is your book about um be confident with that first when you're ready to go out and pursue literary agents or it's great resources online um try unsolicited publishers that do that um check with your local bookstore about if they do take um self-published things of course there's a ton of places to help with that I always want to give somebody the magic answer because I always I always remember what it's like to struggle. Um, and I struggled so much with so many things in my ideas. Nothing came easy and I've never forgotten that. So I feel it's almost personal when people ask me about that because I just really want to help and give them the right answer. But um, the best I can do is don't give up and inspire you to try everything. And that was the longest answer ever. So. <laughs> and and here we have somebody actually giving you a suggestion for your next book because I'm sure you, you, you know, you might you might be running out of ideas. Would you write a book on how cool it is to adopt special needs cats and dogs? 
Well, that's, you know, that uh, I'm qualified for that. So I think that's a very good idea. I will add it to the list because <laughs> there is there is a list. But yes, I think there does need to be a book like that. So thank you. And let's wrap with this great question. Um, this is probably one, I, I don't know if you've ever heard this before, but they want to know if you really eat mac and cheese and worms. No. And usually, if you know worms with kids, you know my audience. It's like, you know the you know what skunks do when you bring up skunks. You know worms in food. You know what that... And if you read a book about underwear, you know what happens. It's like there are just certain things with my age group that make kids laugh. And when you write about the type of stuff that I do that's sometimes so complicated, like taking care of the earth in peace, if you do silly, unpredictable things, you usually will keep their attention. So that's why I put that in. And then also, if you know it's okay to be different, there is a page in there that says it's okay to eat macaroni and cheese in the bathtub. It was simply uh, like, what is he saying? Not do it, nor does he do it, but it makes <laughs> kids laugh. So yeah. that's why that's my deal with mac and cheese. And that's, that's why your books are such a win-win for our teachers, because they do get the children's attention and keep their focus. So it, it's, it's just a wonderful thing. So keep writing for us, Todd. Uh, with you. that, I want to let everybody know that um, our next webinar is coming up October 12th. Um, the Magic of Music, Kira Willie has been with us before. She does a fantastic job. She's a specialist in music and mindfulness, and she manages to marry the two quite beautifully. So we hope you um, can register for that. And we thank you so much for being here today. We uh, hope you make it to shopbecker.com. Look at the resources. Look at these great book sets we have here for you. And um, Todd, we hope you will visit us again. I would love to thank all of you for being here. Um, I hope I've inspired you and and made you feel good. I mean, my story is just my story. We all have one. Um, and for everything that you do every day that impact kids' lives, like what happened with me. So thank you. Um, the end. Love, Todd. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Yay, thank you. Um, so I'll turn off my camera now and my mic, and we'll just let people continue to chat because we know that they love to just um, give a couple more thank yous before they sign off. So we always read every single thing you write in the chat, and we will most certainly share it with Todd. So um, don't be shy. Thanks again.